What is up, comic book community? My name is Joe, and you're watching 360 Comics. In this video, we are diving into part three of what I consider to be the best collection that I have ever purchased. Today's topic is going to be X-Men and the other mutant-related books, all the best keys, and of course, we're saving the three best for last, so stay tuned. We hit two major milestones this week, so now is your last chance to enter both of these giveaways right here. First, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel, like this video, and leave a comment on it. And you can check out our other videos, like them, and leave comments on them for additional entries. And head on over to Instagram, make sure you're a follower there, and enter the giveaway to win this book. Both of the winners will be picked live on Instagram this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be going live. I'll be chatting with the community for a little bit, and I'll be picking both of these winners. So make sure you enter before then, and good luck. So if you missed the first two videos pertaining to this collection, don't worry. You can go watch those later. You don't have to do them in order. I just chunked them off uh, with different titles and stuff. The first video, it was Spider-Man Fantastic Four, Daredevil, and Silver Surfer. The last video was all the DC titles because there weren't nearly as many of them. And this one today, like I said, is going to be Uncanny X-Men and the other mutant-related books, the X-Books, if you will. Uh, and we got a lot of good ones. I know that uh, I've been like kind of flipping through some boxes for these videos but for this one I did not just because I did not have too much time this week uh, but let's get into the keys and I promise we will go back to flipping through some boxes in the next video starting off right here with some Claremont X-Men we got Uncanny X-Men number 120 this is the first cameo appearance of Alpha Flight great cover and a really great team uh, you know that even had their own run that went well over 100 issues from the 80s into the 90s and uh, yeah, you know, I really hope we eventually see them on the screen. Be really cool to incorporate them, uh, you know, maybe with Wolverine's origin and stuff like that. Next up, we've got their full appearance, their first full appearance in the very next issue of 121. And uh, guess what? Not just one copy, but two copies of that same book right there. Can't go wrong getting that Bronze Age Claremont X-Men. Just like this book right here, we got Uncanny X-Men number 130. For the first appearance of Dark Phoenix. And not just that, but this book is mentioned in Stranger Things Season 1, Episode 1. I always like that as a little uh, you know, piece of Jeopardy trivia. But uh, yeah, anyway, really great book, obviously. First Dark Phoenix. Uh, but this one, this one, honestly, I wish that this was the first Dark Phoenix cover. Uh, this is, you know, just in my opinion, one of the coolest covers of this time period by John Byrne, um, you know, featuring Dark Phoenix really prominently crushing the X-Men logo. So cool. Gotta love that one. And this next one is sweet because not only is this one of the best X-Men stories ever written, Days of Future Past, but you see that up there right in the trade dress? That is a signature by the one and only Chris Claremont. Now, his signature is pretty common. It's not like, uh, you know, a Stan Lee signature or, you know, even Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko that are super rare. Um, not that Stan Lee's that rare, but Stan Lee's signature adds a lot of value to comics. Um, Chris Claremont certainly does, but not to the extent that, uh, you know, some of those those older creators do. Uh, this is phenomenal, though. This I got to decide. Am I going to keep this in the personal collection as a huge fan of X-Men, of Claremont, and specifically of this issue? I don't know. I gotta decide on that. Uh, skipping up away, but still in that Claremont run, we got X-Men 221. First appearance of Mr. Sinister. A lot of people are thinking that they might dive deeper into Mr. Sinister in the MCU because they've really, you know been uh you know magneto centric as far as the x-men villains uh you know during that that fox run of x-men uh, but yeah mr sinister's a great one then we got uh one of the later claremont books x-men number 266 the second appearance of gambit but this is the key to get for gambit uh despite it being his uh not his first appearance that was more of a, a timing issue with public uh publication this was meant to be his first appearance this next book is his actual first appearance um that being said this book is much less valuable and uh there were two copies of it Still good book, still a key, still, you know, something that people pick up, but definitely 266 is the one that more people want as far as Gambit keys. Uh, moving on to some Wolverine here now. Uh, we got Wolverine number one. This is from the limited series from 1982. 
Um, and yeah, this is first Wolverine solo title, really, really classic cover that's been homaged a bazillion times. I don't need to say much more about that. Uh, but then we got the first uh, ongoing as well. Great to have uh, a lot of people I've heard recently. I, I'd never thought this before, but I have heard a bunch of people recently say that they, they like this cover better than the other one. I, you know, that's that's a matter of opinion. I personally like the uh, the limited series run better. And look at that. We got a second copy. And this one really, really sharp, really nice. Uh, and what usually comes with that book is this book right here, issue number eight of that run, classic cover by Buscema. And fortunately, it did reach up far enough to hit 88. Um, and this is the first meeting of Wolverine and Deadpool. This has been a very popular book recently due to Deadpool 3. And I'll tell you this, uh, pretty cool. There were actually two copies of this and two copies of this uh, in this collection, but I actually sold one copy of each to a, a local collector who had been looking for those issues. So those are already uh, gone and sold. I still do have these two left, and I should take a point to note it, uh, Note that uh, tonight, that is Thursday, uh, what is this, August 10th, uh, I am doing a claim sale. I don't usually do them on Thursday, but I am doing one tonight um, because uh, I've got some other obligations tomorrow. Um, but yeah, uh, the, all this stuff uh, that I don't keep for myself and also the DC stuff from the last video will be up for grabs. Anyway, moving on, we got more stuff to do. Uh, Wolverine... Uh, number 66, this is the first appearance of Old Man Logan, a really popular modern age key, uh, you know, really, um, you know, this is just popular to begin with, but it, it really got pushed by that Logan movie and how good that movie was. Then we got Wolverine Origins, number 10. This is the first appearance of Dakin, Dakin. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I have always said Dakin, but I've also heard people say Dakin. So if you know how it's pronounced for sure. Let me know down in the comments below. But as you can see, this one is uh, signed and I think remarked. It looks like a remark there. I'm, I'm not 100%. I got to look into this a little bit more. There might be a signature in there somewhere. I'm not, I'm not sure. So I got to yeah do, do a little bit of research on that one. But great book nonetheless. Then we got uh, some B stuff hopping all the way back to the 1970s. This is Amazing Adventures number 11. This is the first appearance of Beast with fur. Prior to this, he was just some guy with really big feet. His character design was not great in the 1960s, but they did improve upon it in the 70s. And a few issues later, he was drawn with blue fur for the first time. That book was also in this collection, but this is the one that holds the most value uh, and is just a great key. Ooh, then we got this one, a book that I don't think I have ever had. Um... Not often that that comes across, uh, you know, especially for a uh, major key, not just a major key, but a major X-Men related key. Uh, this is Iron Fist 14, the first appearance of Sabretooth. He's right on the cover right here. Obviously a major uh, villain, uh, you know, an adversary to Wolverine, um, an ally to Wolverine at some points, depending on uh, what continuity we're in and stuff. But great, great book. And again, one that I have never owned. Um, pretty solid. Then we got uh, another book that's not a specific X title, but definitely an X-Men key. This is Avengers uh, Annual number 10, first appearance of Rogue in comic books. Um, and I believe it's also first Madeline Pryor, but uh, first Rogue is like what really makes this book um, great. And it's such a shame that this book does not have a better cover because I think it is really undervalued due to the busyness and really just... It's an unappealing cover. Let's be real. I think this is Al, Al Milgram. Uh, if you want to hear someone talk about this cover, uh, talk to Bronzeville Comics about it. He has a lot to say about this cover. <laughs> then we got New Mutants, number 87, first appearance of Cable. And that's a newsstand. Uh, it's not specifically super high grade, but still newsstands from this time period, late 80s, would have been a little bit more rare. Actually, this might have been 1990. I don't remember exactly what year this came out, but nonetheless, great book, great key. Um, and this is a newsstand too. Not that it matters. This was a little bit earlier, um, but X factor number six, first appearance of apocalypse. And this was another book that this collection had two of definitely not going to complain about that. And we are down to the last three books, the best three in this collection. Let me move these really quick. And, uh, the best three, uh, X books in this collection. Obviously, we've seen some really, really crazy books so far, and there are still more videos to come. I have, I think, three more videos that I'll be doing on this collection, and this is the third one. So, 
as you can see, this is a plentiful collection with a lot to talk about. Uh, the first of the three books, the three big ones, is New Mutants number 98. Not much else to say about this book other than it's the first appearance of Deadpool, a character that has exploded in popularity over the last number of years. And boom, look right there. It's a newsstand copy. This book came out in 1991. So at this point, newsstand copies were, I think, 15% of uh, maybe maybe 15 or 20 percent of the total print run so they were much smaller at that point of a print run they're harder to find especially in high grade unfortunately this one is not in super high grade definitely not a contender to send in and get that nine six nine eight but still for someone who wants a newsstand copy of this book and to maybe keep it raw or whatever they want to do with it this is a solid copy Ooh, I'm loving these next two books. These are really, these, uh, how about a single digit X-Men book? This was by far the earliest X-Men book. There were a couple of golden, or sorry, not golden, of silver age X-Men books in this collection, but I don't think, I think they were all from like the forties issued, like, 40s and 50s uh, but this one is issue number three not only is this the third appearance of the x-men it's also the first appearance of the blob a character who definitely played a big role in the 90s uh, both in like the uh he's the first level boss of the arcade game um, but also in the animated series and, and, and stuff like that. I hope we see more of the blob going forward. We'll, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see if that really happens, but you know, it's such a great book. It's the third appearance of the X-Men, a major villain first appearance and, uh, yeah, definitely a very collectible book. But this last one, I saved this one last because I, in my opinion, it's the coolest despite this probably being more valuable. Actually, both of these books probably being more valuable than this. Uh, we've got X-Men number 94. When I think X-Men and when most people think X-Men, they think Chris Claremont. He really, he revolutionized the team. He wrote some of their best stories. He created some of their best characters, um, and yeah, he, he made the X-Men what they are today. I don't think we would have gotten the Fox franchise if it weren't for him. I don't think, uh, we would have gotten the animated series in the nineties if it weren't for him. So big kudos to him. This is the first Chris Claremont book. Not only that, but boom, it is again signed by Chris Claremont and right there in silver ink, kind of hard to see, but it is signed by Len Wayne as well. Uh, so double signed uh, by two creators and uh, Len helped put together the, the Claremont team. And I think he was the writer on giant size X-Men one, if I remember correctly, which is that, you know, that, that, that creation of that team. And this is another book where I just, I want to keep it so bad for my personal collection, but I already have a higher grade copy of it and I can always crack that and get it signed if I wanted to. So I probably, will end up putting this up for sale in the claim sale tonight so if you're around stop by instagram live tonight probably starting at 7 30 eastern time haven't decided yet make sure you enter both the giveaways i'm pulling a winner tomorrow that is friday the 11th of august at 8 p.m eastern live on instagram check it out there come hang out and chat uh and anyway Hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it was a little bit shorter. Uh, didn't have us flipping through the, the books, but definitely next time I promise I will do some of that. And until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.